Hello, I'm Connor Fagan, and welcome to 2024. Another year of me being really inconsistent with making videos, and I promise this year at some point I will uh, cut my hair. But with that being said, you're here to understand how to do fixed fee billing inside of Halo PSA, or at least I hope so, because if not, you might want to skip this video. So what am I talking about? Well, let's say you're an MSP, and let's say that you charge laptop setup fees, let's say you charge onboarding and offboarding fees, but you're struggling with actually invoicing correctly for it. There's currently either a lot of overhead where you have to manually remember to do it, or you're having to quote up front and it's a little bit arduous, you know. Um, we see a lot, I suppose, and it kind of differs across the pond. So in the UK, I would say for the most part, if we're charging a customer something, we want to send out a quote first. We want that quote to be accepted. No hidden charges, that type thing. Um, I would say across the pond though, in America um, and Canada as well, to be fair, um, I see it quite frequently that your agreements will encapsulate, you know, there's always a fee for new device setups or onboarding or offboarding you and the customer have this relationship where you will just apply that charge every month and they'll kind of accept it and, and away you go. I'm not saying either way is right or wrong. I'm just saying that is what I observe for the most part. So how do we do it? What does it look like and how does it work? Well, let me jump into my Halo screen. Let me make this full screen, not that one full screen, this one full screen. Zoom in one more. Yeah, I think that looks cute enough. Cool. So what have we done? So. What we do is we make a new ticket inside of Halo PA PSA. We select the ticket type fixed fee, and I'm going to type in here laptop setup. And down at the bottom, we have this custom field called fixed fee type. Now, don't get hung up on the fact you have to make a ticket for this. Don't get hung up that you have to make a custom field and select something. Just trust the process for the moment. And I'm going to say this is a laptop setup. That's going to apply a ticket rule to the ticket. We'll cover that in a minute. Do not fear. And then we're going to submit the ticket. And what that's going to do is that's going to queue a run book, run a run book, tell us that it applied successfully. And it means I can then claim the ticket, close the ticket. And then I can go into invoicing, ready for invoicing. And you'll see here we have a laptop set up. I can create the invoice for that, and this will then invoice the customer that flat fee or fixed fee is how I've described it, of £75 in my environment with the description laptop setup fee and all of the correct information with it. So how have we done this and why have we done it this way? Well, let's go through a little bit of what's actually happening and then I'll show you how we've done it. So. This run book here is essentially just issuing a product to the ticket. Now, this isn't new information. This is, if you're an existing partner of ours, this is the way I always recommended doing this. Um, and I basically would say is, hey, if you've got a fixed fee for a ticket, click the dots in the top right, click issue product, and then select the product from the list. That will then apply the product and apply the charge, and away you go. Another way we've built it in the past is to, you know, um, change our workflow so we might have a fork in our workflow that has an action button at the top the action button again pops up that issue product screen the engineer has to pick the product and away you go i've never really liked it though it's always been like a you know it always comes with a with it with a clause and it's like yeah we can do it but this however i quite like this which is why i'm showing you how to do it um because we're defining it some level in halo that this is going to happen you can't not issue this product yes you could go to products and you could you know edit it and remove it and do all of that but for the most part it's quite granular it's quite rigid it's also may meaning sure that whenever we do a a ticket of this nature and it could be driven from the self service portal it could be just handled as a part of a workflow or an automation before you know you could come in as an incident and you may have an option to make a fixed fee ticket or change it midway through. There's so much control you could do with this, but we've kept it really simple and really clean. So I'm gonna start with the run book. I'm gonna show you how that's been built. Um, as always, there's gonna be documentation in the description below. Um, Q Robbie, who's gotta write that up in a minute, but we are gonna do that. It's gonna include basically what I've spoke about in this video, but much more eloquently. So let's start with the run book and let me show you what's happening. And again, this is this is really quite simple stuff. We've not overbaked it for this demonstration. 
But essentially we have a run book called um, Issue Items. Um, there's some spoilers in there, so you don't get caught up on them yet. They're not quite ready. Um, but essentially um, we have this very, very, very simple run book. The first run book is um, a Halo API action to update the ticket. And it's basically what it's doing is it's taking the ticket ID and it's issuing an item to it. Now, the most important mechanism here is the item ID. Now, the reason I say that, and if I could just jump out of here very quickly, is because if you use an accounting tool like QuickBooks Online, like Xero, you're going to want to make sure that your chart of accounts is aligned and you're going to want to make sure that you're taxing correctly. Much easier in the UK, I must admit, but we have a 50% spread now with America, so I now have to worry about all that pain. But essentially, what it means is, is we can set up on here, and I haven't in this environment, but we could set up our tax rates, we could set up our income and expense accounts, we could make sure that this is going to be billed to that customer correctly. Um, ignore the cost and pricing on here for now. It's worthwhile doing it, but we're having to manually override this. I'll explain why in a minute. But it's really important you have a product. If you're wondering where I'm getting the ID from, well, you see it's the ID in this column here. Ignore all the leading zeros or the, or the starting zeros. Um, alternatively, click the product and you'll see in your URL, it will say item ID equals and then the integer. So going back to that run book very quickly. Integrations, integration run books, issue item flowchart. We're saying issue the item with the ID 20. There is no cost associated with us on this. There is labor or you know hours, man hours, but don't worry about that for now. The price, this is the important mechanism. This is what we're going to be billing our customer. Quantity, I'm just adding one, and quantity shipped is also one. The reason I've added in quantity shipped one or matching the quantity here is because if you don't, it'll say it's not been delivered. Now, if you add it in manually, and I'll show you the product again in a second, if you add it in manually, it'll always say it's been delivered. Um, but because we're having to, you know, API this in, we're going to have to define that metric. So quantity shipped is one. And that is basically that. We're just issuing a product, defining some static values, and away you go. The next part in here is purely a success. So what we like to do now whenever we're doing these integrations on a ticket, we want to post back to the ticket to say it's worked. Um, and again, all this JSON payload will be in the documentation. Um, again, it's posting back to the ticket, and basically it says that the fixed fee has been fixed fee has been applied. Um, and essentially, it's as simple as that. Um, it then is either a success or a failure. If it's failed, it goes back to the start. And um, the reason we've done a success on unsuccess here is because this is just a notification message. It's not that important. It can't get to this stage without actually being successful. Um, so let's issue in a product and then you'll see on the ticket that the product is here it has the cost and the price and you'll see that the delivery has been delivered one out of one which is what we're expecting so how does all this gel together Connor well if we slow it down a little bit you'll see that when we make this we select the fixed fee ticket now this doesn't have to be this mechanism again you could handle this in many ways but what we basically said is it's fixed fee and we've made a custom field down here. And then when we select something, it starts a rule or applies or matches a rule. Now, why does it apply or match that rule? I hear you thinking in your heads. Well, that is also super simple. You'll get the nature of this video, simple. Um, but essentially, um, we say the rule is match this custom single drop down field. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and if it includes laptop setup or desktop setup, I want to start a new workflow. And that workflow I've called fixed fee laptop desktop. That workflow is simply applying that automation at the very start. The automation we've called issue item. And essentially, once that automation has ran, it will then move the ticket to the triage stage or the in progress stage, depending on what you want to do with your workflow. Again, super simple workflow. For those who don't know what automations are, they're simply actions that are made quick. Some people would call them quick actions, but I like to go around the houses. So uh, issue item, and all that is literally doing on here is um, starting the webhook integration or runbook integration called issue item. That is what I demonstrated a minute ago. That is what's going to apply that product. And again, you could really go to town with this. You could do a lot more functionality with this. 
we're just keeping it quite simple. Now there is one last thing that I want to mention and that's on the ticket type itself if you go down this route. My advice um, if you're doing this is uh, one of two things actually. Um, you either want to override the charge rate on the ticket to be no charge or clone the actions in the workflow and make it so your engineers can't actually pick a charge type. Um, the reason that is is because of two things. If you have a break fix customer and this is left to defaults, you could be charging for remote support or on-site support, i.e. you're double billing for the ticket. Um, or if they're in contract and the customer goes, hey, Connor, how much time did we use in January? You go, oh, you used 10 hours. And they go, cool, can we have the breakdown so we, just, so we know where we're at? And then you go, yeah, five of those hours was building laptops. They're going to turn around and go, well, Connor, I thought we paid for all of those. Ah, oh, you do. So why is it caught under our contract? Ah, it shouldn't be. That's why I do no charge here. We can still track the time. We're just not accounting it against either an invoice, we're not billing for it, or it's not being caught against the agreement. And I think that's quite important. The last thing you want to make sure you do is that you apply defaults whenever the ticket is changed to this type. In my build, as of right now, we've just seen this is not that important because the ticket type is created at the start. But if you have an action that turns a ticket into this ticket or a child ticket spawns, you're going to want to make sure that you apply the defaults. The defaults being in this environment or this build, the no charge. If you don't, there's a chance that this won't work correctly. And that's basically that. We make a ticket. We have a custom field, which is a custom drop down. If you don't know how to make that, again, configuration, custom objects, custom fields. We go to our second page. I've made one down here called fixed fee. Just click new in the top right. And it's just a single selection drop down with the values in it. And the reason we need that is because on the rule, the rule is watching or checking for that field equaling something or containing that value. And that's it. That's how I now do fixed fee billing for customers that need it. Um, I hope that's helped you. I, I, I think this is quite a clean way of doing it. I think this is quite a nice solution. Um, it reduces error. It reduces overhead. Um, I could say it's a nice little automation just to, you know, help things along. Um, but for me, th this, this works. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, as always, please do subscribe to us if you aren't already. It really does help the channel grow. I am aiming for that beautiful 1,000 subscribers this year. And um, that's all down to you lovely people at home watching. Um, and that's it. I've been Connor Fagan. We're in it. We are Renata Solutions. We are, trust me. Um, if there's anything else we can help with, please let us know. Um, have a great day. Have a fabulous start to 2024. And I'll hopefully see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.